Today on Judge Faith, a tenacious landlord and his litigious tenant come to court to collect. I wasn't going to send her anything. I wasn't going to do anything, Your Honor. I wasn't going to give her her unpaid rent back. The oh, people had oh, two oh, little sorry, rags sorry. Off. I find your excuses to be completely insufficient and your behavior to be quite egregious. And later, a dispute over who owns an injured horse causes these ladies to come to court. I was unaware that Donna had tied the rope so the horse could not get out of the trailer. And I'm yelling, untie the rope, untie the rope, untie the rope. But when the horse backed out of the trailer, you could just see blood dripping down. And she goes on there in big, bold capital letters. She says, everybody beware of Donna Newton. I mean, she does refer to you as psycho, but then she, you do turn around and you, she wrote you have some thing. choice words for her as well. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Henriette Wouters says the defendant ignored her request for a move-out walkthrough and then inflated damages. She's suing for a security deposit. Defendant Terry Caesar says he doesn't owe any money because the damage Henriette caused to his home is unforgivable. All rise, court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Wouters versus Caesar. Thank you, Juan. Henriette Wouters. Yes, Your Honor. You are suing the defendant, Terry Caesar. Yes, Your Honor. For $600, the return of your security deposit, and you say because he didn't return it in a timely manner, he owes you double? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, why don't we start with you, ma'am? Tell me what's going on. Okay, in December of 2009, I was looking for a home to rent. I found one on Craigslist, and I met Terry at that time. We looked at some of the shortcomings in the house, but we decided we could live with it. <clears throat> for the time being. Uh, who is we? My husband and I, I'm sorry. Okay. My husband and I. So the two of you sign a lease? I signed a lease, yes. May I see it, please? And what was your agreement in terms of what you would pay for a security deposit and rent? It was a $600 security deposit, and the rent was $850 a month. Okay. And Mr. Cesar, they lived there uh, for more than two years. The original lease was a two-year lease, right? That's correct. And what years. kind of, did you have any problems with them as tenants? No problems at all. They were uh, very good tenants, Your Honor. Okay, paid the rent on time? Two months rent at a time. It was, oh, they, they were paid they were more very, than one month's rent advance, at a time. In advance, Your Honor, very good tenants. So tell me what happens when it's time for you to move out. So when it's time to move out, uh, I gave Mr. Caesar a notice of two months, which we promised because it was two months at a time. When we moved out on April the 20th, I asked him to do a walkthrough and let me know if there was anything I had to do in order to get my security deposit back. Did anything. you do a walkthrough? I did do the walkthrough, Your Honor, yes. With her? No, not with her. Okay. Well, isn't that the point of doing a walkthrough? You do it with the, with, with the tenant so you, they can, you can apprise them? Who, who, who did you do it with? I did it by myself, Your Honor. Oh, okay. Simply went through. That's, that's convenient. You did a walkthrough with yourself, by yourself. I walked through by myself, Your Honor. <laughs> and so things didn't go in her favor, obviously, at the walkthrough you conducted on your own? Correct, Your Honor. But I also would like to tell you all the improvements we have made to the house. That's irrelevant. Well, hold on a second. <laughs> Mr. Cesar, can I decide what's relevant or not in terms of the case of the evidence? Can I I'm decide? objecting, Your Honor. What date do you say you did a walkthrough? I don't recall. It was in a couple days. And you say you found some issues. Yes. And do, do you then notify her? I did not, Your Honor, notify her of the issues. Why is that? Because I was so furious, Your Honor, upset, beside myself, that I decided at that point never to speak to Henriette again. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what did she do? What did she do? Yes. After five years of being your dream tenant, all of a sudden, what, what happened? What did you see? What did you find? During the walkthrough, Your Honor, I found that the tenant had rigged a junction box outside of the washroom, ran an extension cord through the dryer vent, and was powering, I don't know what, through this extension cord through the dryer vent to the exterior of the house. What was going on? Probably the weed whacker or whatever. 
Well, she didn't actually rewire anything. She just had extension cords going to the outside of the house? Yes, Your Honor, through the dryer van. Okay, and did she cause, in the way it was set up, did it cause some type of damage? It very well may have, or could have, Your Honor. It could have. It could have. It was but, a fire but, but hazard, But did it, Your Honor. because we're over here. It did here. not, no, it did not, but it could have. We kept $400 Correct. for a security deposit, Correct. right? Tell me why you kept $400 for damages. Uh, they had drilled holes in the wall and put anchors in and hung pictures or uh, shell shelving. Do you, have, do you have photos of that, sir? I do. <laughs> I, I didn't, when discovery was requested, I sent in a list of my things. I didn't know exactly what I needed to send it in with my evidence. You didn't think that you would need a visual example of what you claim the damages are in the, in the home, sir? Since you conducted this walkthrough. I did. On your own, by yourself, That's and you're correct. the only one that saw it, it would be helpful for you to have a photo to prove that it's actually there. You had to pay someone to repair I have damages? estimates, Your Honor. So you haven't, you, you don't. That's correct, you Your don't, Honor. <laughs> you know what I'm about to ask? Coming up. The damages are disputed. Let me see your estimates. And, and this is in this. Detective. Thank you. <laughs> and later, a horse expert and her customer argue over an agreement to buy a horse. That is the agreement to purchase with payments. Which is supposed to be a 30 day trial. Well, okay, you read this before you signed it? Yes, I, re I read the, the majority of it, what I signed, yes. Oh, okay, the yes. majority of it? The majority and of so it. so you just signed a document that you didn't, you did. didn't read the full document? I did. Well, whose fault is that? Plaintiff Henriette Wouters says Terry inflated damages. She's suing for a security deposit. Defendant Terry Caesar says he doesn't owe any money because Henriette damaged his home. Sir, so you kept $400 because you said you paid someone. No, I never said that, Your Honor. Okay. Um, let me see your estimates. And, and this is in this. Detective. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, this, is, this was back in April. So it's been about five or six months. And all you have is an estimate? That's you, correct. You, you kept the Ex money, so you have the money yes, to make the correct. repairs. Excuse me. The I repairs aren't going to fix themselves, Your Honor. I have the cash. And so, Arizona law, you have only 14 days. You have 14 days to either do one of two things. And that is, you either have to return the security deposit, or you give her an itemized breakdown of why you're keeping the security deposit. You didn't do either. I wasn't going to send her anything. I wasn't going to do anything, Your Honor. I wasn't going to give her her unpaid rent back. That's how outraged I was, Your Honor. And then you talked about the improvements you made in the home. Tell me about that. We put a ceiling fan in the kitchen. We put a big sink in the bathroom. Um, after two years, because I couldn't stand it with my allergies anymore, and so we put all laminate flooring through the whole house. And you didn't ask him to contribute to any of this you paid exactly, for this on your own? Exactly, because I just wanted to live there and be comfortable. You Is that know, true, sir? I said she was crazy. Is, sir, is that true? Is that true that she yes, did all those Yes, Your Honor, things? it's true. The Come carpet on, was so less than a year old when she moved in. The oh, people had oh, two oh, little sorry, rags. Sorry. Oh, 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 oh. The oh, carpet was clean and sanitized. All right, guys. We put double pane windows in, double pane patio door. After we did that, we slipped out the sir, windows and we put. Uh, she basically the... remodeled your home, sir. We did. So, and you like give I her said, the Your Honor, I, I agree. You She's crazy. The the windows work fine. Mr. Cesar, um, this, is, this, is, this is really outrageous. It's been months since she moved out. You have not paid a single person. You have not submitted a single receipt to this court that you actually paid someone to fix the damages you say she caused on a walkthrough that you did on your own by yourself. My judgment in this case is for the plaintiff. I'm ordering you to pay her the $1,200, not only the $600, but double. That's the law in Arizona, because if you're going to be a landlord, you have to act like one. You have 14 days to get in touch with your tenants to do one of two things. You did not do either, and I find your excuses to be completely insufficient and your behavior to be quite egregious. Judgment for the plaintiff, $1,200. Thank you. <laughs> I think Judge Faith did an awesome job. I am so grateful. She was fantastic. I think the ruling was fair, but unfortunately, I feel the, the judge completely ignored the code violations with the electricity that, once again, could have burnt down the house. 
Plaintiff Nicole Bennett says the defendant injured her horse and now is refusing to pay. She's suing for breach of contract, vet bills, and boarding fees. She's accompanied in court today by Danny Bennett. Defendant Donna Newton says she doesn't know because it wasn't her fault the horse was injured and Nicole tricked her into signing the agreement. She's countersuing for slander. She's accompanied in court today by Sherry Robertson. Nicole Bennett? Yes. You are suing the defendant Donna Newton? Yes. For $1,980, the purchase amount for a horse, vet bills, and boarding fees? Correct. And you are countersuing, ma'am, for $500 for slander? Correct. You own horses? Yes. Is this a part of what you do for a living? No, I have three horses, but um, due to health reasons, I was trying to find them good homes. Mm -hmm. So I showed her a picture of mine, and right then she like fell in love, and she's like, oh, I want her, I want her. And I offered her a 30-day lease, which she takes the horse, no money down, mm -hmm. and she could move the horse, try it out for three days, and if she likes her buyer, and I would take a payment arrangement. You entered into a written agreement for the horse? For a 30-day trial. May I no, no, no. Is there anything the in writing about the purchase yes. of the horse? Yes. yes. May I see that, please? Yes. Okay. What was the purchase price, ma'am? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. Did you give her any money towards that? No. If you, I you haven't get, you didn't no. not give her anything. Right. At the end of the thirty-day trial, if I decided that I wanted to keep the horse, it was sound and whatnot. So you're saying it was a thirty-day trial? You're saying it was an outright purchase? That, I offered the trial, but she refused it. That would okay. Make and this sense. is the original document. Yeah, that is the the agreement to purchase with payments. Which is supposed to be a 30-day trial. Well, okay, this is in writing. What do you, there's no dispute about what, what your responsibilities are in the purchase agreement. I don't understand why you're saying it's supposed to be a 30-day trial. You read this before you signed it? Um, I, I did not, uh, yes, I, re I read the, the majority of it, what I signed, yes. Oh, okay, the yes. majority of it? The majority and of so it. And so you just signed I, a document that you didn't, I you did. didn't read the full document? I did. Well, whose fault is that? My own. Okay, That's correct. because you have a contract here and it's, it doesn't right. say anything about a 30-day trial. Right, that contract was supposed to be a 30-day trial period ma for the Ma'am, 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 so ma'am. That's what my impression was. Ma'am. Yes. Impressions, we have a written agreement. Mm -hmm. Impressions don't matter. Okay. Coming up on Judge Faith, did miscommunication cause the contract confusion? She goes on there in big, bold, capital letters. She says, everybody beware of Donna Newton. I actually have proof that it wasn't me that put it on there. It was a mutual friend. I mean, she does refer to you as psycho, but then she, you do turn around and you, she wrote you have some thing. choice words for her as well. Plaintiff Nicole Bennett says Donna bought the horse and now is refusing to pay. She's suing for breach of contract, vet bills, and boarding fees. Defendant Donna Newton says she doesn't know because Nicole tricked her into signing the agreement. She's countersuing for slander. Take me back to what happened the day she tried to pick up the horse. Well, she came with the trailer. We managed to get the horse halfway in the trailer and she started to freak out. And usually, you know, a horse should be able to get out of the trailer. Well, I was unaware that Donna had tied the rope so the horse could not get out of the trailer. And so the horse is in there, you know, causing a ruckus, and I'm yelling, untie the rope, untie the rope, untie the rope. Well, finally the rope got freed, but when the horse backed out of the trailer, you could just see blood dripping down. And What I, happened? Uh, she cut herself in the trailer somehow. And, and why do you say that's her fault? Because it sounds like all of you were in various stages of trying to get the horse into the trailer. Why do you want her to pay for the horse's vet bills? Oh, my goodness. Well, there was two vet bills, and I'm only asking for one vet bill. Oh, the the first goodness. vet visit. What is this? It's a gash. Wow. And you but, could stick your hand up in it. Uh, I'm not going to put this up. It's too graphic to show. Why is it something more than an accident that the horse got injured? Because in order for her to pay, you have to show me she was somehow negligent. It appears that all oh, of okay. you were trying well, to get the okay, horse in. Well, anyone in the horse field knows you do not tie a horse up when leading it. That's a big no, no. When was you, this signed? She showed up to the trailer of the horse. We tried for the first time, say, around noon. And then the horse got injured. And then she showed back up about 6 p.m. Mm -hmm to try to collect the horse again with the same trailer, and that's when she came inside, because I told her that you're gonna have to come in and sign the agreement before you try to take this horse again, because, you know, the horse is injured. She says she still wants it. So what is she supposed to do then? If she can't get the horse in the trailer, she can't buy the horse. No, we had several options she could have done to get the horse. I okay. was trying to help her get it, but she refused all my help. Um, sir, would you stand up, please? What do you have to add to this? Um, you are the plaintiff's husband? Correct. Okay. Um, I, I was there during the first time when the first incident happened, mm -hmm. and I did go back out there the second time 
when she tried to load the horse, okay. and it was the same trailer. And, well, and what was the problem with the trailer? It, it's too small for the horse because she's a really, really big horse. So let me, let me just say something to you. What bothers me is you're the experienced horse right. person here. You made an assessment that this trailer was too small for the horse, yet you allowed yourself and everyone else to continue to try to force this horse into the trailer. You're the one that was negligent. You have a counterclaim for $500 for slander. What's that about? Okay, um, this very next day on Sunday, her and the mutual friend got together and went on um, the Equine site. It's a Facebook group. It's where people go to look for horses. They, they post horses. She, she goes on there in big, bold capital letters. She says, um, everybody beware of Donna Newton. She's out uh, trolling for free horses or cheap horses. And what proof do you have that you didn't write it? I actually have proof that it wasn't me that put it on there. It was the mutual friend. I had no idea. The Hold on a second. Friend. Let me just oh. read this. So you told your friend what happened? I mean, she obviously got this information yeah. from you, right? I don't see. Where's the rest of what this person wrote? This person. You don't have proof of what she wrote? And why don't you have that if this is your slender case? May I hear from you, ma'am? What's your relationship to the defendant? Just a friend. Okay. We belong to the same group on Facebook, a horse equine group. We were uh, kicked off the site, off of that equine, so we couldn't go back All and get that. All of you that. were? No. Us two were. We, both of us were. I mean, she does refer to you as psycho, but then she, you do turn around tire. and you, she wrote you have some thing. choice words for her as well. In order for you to prove a slender case to me, you have to come into court and actually submit copies of how you've been slandered. This isn't slander. Coming up, Judge Faith Rules. And now, Judge Faith Rules. So what I have here in this case is a contract that hasn't been performed. And what you're doing when you bring a lawsuit like this, you're coming into court and you're asking me for what we call under the law specific performance of this contract. You want me to enforce this contract and order her to perform this contract, pay you the money and take the horse. And in cases like that, it is completely up to the judge in the case, my discretion. And based on the facts and everything I've heard, I'm not going to order her to pick up this horse and pay you for the horse and transport it back. And I'll tell you why. Based on your testimony, you're saying she doesn't have the adequate means. She doesn't have a, the proper trailer to transport the horse. So I'm not going to order her to go find the trailer. She tried, she came, it can't fit. And therefore, I say, sell the horse to somebody else. Sell the horse to someone who has a trailer. I know why you don't want to do it, because the horse got injured while she was trying to take the trailer away. So you want to force her, because that's why I couldn't think in my mind why she came twice and tried to put the horse in a trailer. Why would you then sit down and have her to sign this contract to take the horse? Well, because you wanted to force her to take this horse because the horse had been injured. And you were concerned that you would not be able to sell it to someone else for the price that you were asking her to pay because the horse had been injured. Because it made no sense that you would then sit down and enter into that written contract once you knew she didn't really have the capabilities to take that horse away. So it's completely in my discretion if I want to order her to get another trailer that fits or to go back and try again to get the horse. And I say no. I say find someone else to buy the horse. It didn't work out between the two of you. Your counterclaim is dismissed. It is your duty and your responsibility to bring your evidence to court in order to prove slander to me. You haven't been able to produce a single shred of evidence that proves that she wrote something other than your testimony here today. You say she wrote something about you online. You don't have the proof of that. Your counterclaim is dismissed. And ma'am, I'm not ordering her to perform the contract. Your case is dismissed as well. Judgment for the defendant. The horse was too big, but she wouldn't. Listen, she kept on begging and begging. And as a horse hunter, yes, I shouldn't have done it, but just that's who I am. I just was like, okay, let's find, I'll let you see. It's not my fault the horse was injured, absolutely not, no. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.